Blog Talk Radio. Counter Radio Network presents the Roundtable Report, a discussion of today's issues. So the kit gloves are off as we listen to real answers from real people. Come and join us on the Roundtable Report. All right, welcome to Contra Radio Network, the Roundtable Report. I'm John Jeffers, your host, founder, and executive producer, and purveyor of important and vital prepper information for you preppers and patriots out there. Whether you use it or not, that's up to you. I'll just put it out there. One of the things I want to talk about real quick before we get to the uh, caller there from the 318 area code is this. It's come to my attention that we have a listener behind enemy lines. I will, I'm not going to give this person's identity away or anything else like that, but I will tell you this. It is a person who teaches or is a professor at DePaul University in Chicago. Thank you for joining us and being brave enough, considering all your coworkers out there and their attitudes, so, oh, yes, and this professor is in the sciences department. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Say welcome. Thanks for checking in with us. And pass the word on to those that are like-minded there that are in your classes. I'm sure you know which ones they are and which ones they are not. So, in the meantime, let's go to the lines. We've got a caller from the 318 area code. Hello, caller. Go ahead. How How you doing, John? Pretty good, buddy. Pretty good, pretty good. What's going I'm on? Sorry, I didn't get with you uh, the other night, but we had a bunch of bad storms go through, and it knocked a bunch of power out for different people. And there's still people without power out here. My power never went off, but everybody else did. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know why your power didn't go off? Because you're a oh, prepper. Yes, I do. Well, you're a prepper. Your power better never go off. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yep, that's right. And actually, I, I got called to an older man's place today to do some to help him get his generator up and going. Yes. And. uh I got it up and going for him. You know, he's very bad health. And he said, I'll bet your power didn't go out, did it? And I said, no, sir, it didn't. I said, actually, I've been welding all day today. He goes, welding? You're not even right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got Porky Wheel in the chat room. Come on. He's listening live from Northern Ireland. One of our more dedicated listeners. Welcome, Porky Wheel. Glad you're still awake, buddy. All right. You know, I did promise... Um, Oh, you know, I was thinking, you know, we last uh, Sunday night we talked about dogs and why they're important and why you should maybe consider them in your prepper or patriot group. Something else I want to put in in there. Once you're at your retreat or your, what, what we're going to say is more or less going to be your area of operations, I would suggest getting a couple cats. One, because they're pretty independent. But for the most important part that came to my mind, and I'm sure I'm missing something else also, is that the cats will keep the rodents under control. You know, we don't, you don't need rats running around your AO or your retreat. You don't need the vermin and the uh, disease and pestilence that they carry. The cats will take care of it for you. And they don't, you know, you don't have to have them in the tent with you or your building or anything else. They're pretty much independent animals. But I was thinking, well, if you can have, you know, I've got, I've got a cat and a dog, and they get along fine. So the old, the age-old notion of cats and dogs don't get along, well, that's nonsense. But I was just thinking, you know what, something else to consider. Don't get rid of the cats, man. The cats will take care of the rodent problem and keep them under control. And that's a la- you know, and that's just one more thing as a uh, prepper group leader or a patriot group leader. That's one less thing you have to worry about is actually, vermin or pestilence or actually, disease. You know, Go ahead. Go in ahead. our in our in our area where we live at, uh-huh. cats work pretty good for snakes because they kill snakes. Yeah, they do, and they're quick. They are one thing about yes. this, one of the big differences between uh, cats and dogs. Cats have never lost their instinct for hunting and killing. They have never lost it, and they practice it. You don't believe me? Go watch a cat, man. They're in stalking mode, and they find something that they want to go after. They'll go right to stalking mode. They have never lost that instinct. They will do it. We had a cat, we had a cat that was so well fat and sassy when I was a kid. He weighed 12 and a half pounds. He looked like a, he was half bobcat, though. But 
he would actually catch mice mm-hmm. when he was full. He wouldn't eat them. He would drown them in his water dish and watch them die. Then he'd walk off. That is one thing. The one thing you have to remember about cats: cats will play with their prey before they kill it. Don't ask me why. No one can explain it, but they do, and that's a prime example. They may not be hungry. They have an evil mind. <laughs> You do not ever, as a human being, want to go visit a cat's mind because we have no idea what the hell they're thinking or what their world is like, and I don't want to explore it. Thank you very much. But the idea, <laughs> you don't. Um, even uh, my vet said, you don't want to know what goes on in cats' minds. No one does. But in their world, you know what? They've never lost instinct for hunting. They're going to keep your AO, your retreat, free from vermin and rodents and snakes if, you're, you know, if they're in your area. They've never lost the instinct for hunting and killing, and like I said, and the one thing they do, they will play with their kill be, or their prey before they kill it, and then they may or may not eat it. Sometimes they may bring it to you as, you know, saying, what a great hunter am I, and expect praise, and you should do that for them because they will keep on doing it. It's just something I wanted to put out there. I tell you, you'll be, you would be surprised what a chicken will kill as well. Really? Tell me about it. Yeah. Share it with us. I, I've had... We, We've got chickens. They'll jump on snakes and just tear them to pieces. Really? If it's a small snake, they'll eat it. They'll tear it up and they'll eat it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't either until I seen it. Wow. Well, see, yeah. I'm, you know. Our chicken. And, and you should have chickens I, I at your retreat our, and your AO. There's, they're prim- well, you know, we've talked about it here on this program many times. Yeah, well, we have, we have chickens and we have wild hogs. But uh, the chickens, believe uh-huh. it or not, like if you're butchering a hog, yeah. And you miss the bucket with organs. Uh-huh. The chickens will clean everything up. Chicken will eat, any, eat anything, including themselves. If they kill themselves, they'll eat it too. You know, I once saw something on, uh, what the hell was it we were on? Probably History Channel or something. They used to make, uh, when they when they had the free-range chickens, just the massive uh, hatcheries and all that, what they used to do is they used to, mm-hmm. some guy created like red, red sunglasses or goggles or whatever, that you put on the chickens, so that way they wouldn't see blood. Because if they see blood, they're going to go kill whatever it is. They go that, crazy. Right. They go crazy. I didn't know that and until I saw that, and I said, well, that's just something I did not know. So that goes right along with what yeah. you're saying. So, you know, you might want to think about guineas it. Are good, guineas, guineas are good, too, because they'll actually be like a watchdog. Uh, you know, my father-in-law lives in Alabama. He has a farm down there. And the next-door neighbors have guineas. Oh, good God. Something comes even close to that house, you hear it. You hear it. I mean, yes. it's on, It's like, wow. But it's something to think about. They'll actually kill a snake, too. Will they really? Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, something you might want to consider, though, if you're a prepper group leader or a patriot leader, is having these animals within your retreat or your AO. Just something I wanted to bring up because I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, this might be you know something worthwhile for people to think about. And that's what, you know, and that's really what this show's about. You know, I'll put the information out there. You decide what it is you want to use or not use, that kind of thing. So there you go. More good information, as always, always comes from CRN, and it's reliable. And I'll tell you what I, and I'll tell you what I've noticed since we had this bad storm. We it's knocked a widespread people out in our area. What you notice? Of power and it, and you know which. I know it's that every time because I'm the only one who has power, but mm-hmm. everybody was so unprepared for it, they didn't have a clue it was coming. Really? Yes, and, oh. and, and it bit them in the pants. I mean, they didn't have a clue. I mean, I, I've got generators to pick up because they didn't start crank up and run. i got to get them running now. So. Well, guess, well, the, this unbelievable. Way. well, you know, th- all right, and therein lies an idea. If you are prepared enough and you have a couple of generators and your neighbor likes to have a big storm, power goes out, you could always offer them some electricity and, of course, charge them for it. Because then you should be... Well, the, the, ones, that I'm, the ones I'm helping out, though, yeah. generally can't take care of the building just for the fact that they're health. I no, would no. never charge somebody that way because they're too far gone to... No, I understand that. Themselves. But there are others who should have to pay for the wear and tear on your equipment if they if, oh, yeah. they, if exactly. they want to. And you know what? It's a way for you to help finance other preps. Just an idea. That's right. Put it out there. You know, I'm not saying we should, uh, you know. Oh, guess 1530 is in the chat room. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate it. I, I actually had 
I actually had a couple people call me wanting to know if I had a few extra solar <laughs> generators that they could borrow. Yeah, I, I just and happen like, to have them. No. <laughs> I just happen to have them. Hold on. Right. I'll tell you what I'll do instead. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you give so, me. But, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting the past couple of days. So I'll just say that. Well, that's, you know, it's all right. Hey, if you if you don't like listening to the show and you want to watch it, you can do that. We're on the Facebook uh, Go Live on the CRN Like page, not the group page. You can do that there if you want to. We're, we're live there. Just posted another uh, Sunday's video on YouTube. So that way, the more views we get, the more subscribers I get, um, we can put it up into more of an F, you know, like the official CRN type thing. Right now... You'll find it under, only well, under my YouTube, name. Is the YouTube under CRN or is it Contra Radio Network or what? I was just going to say it's under my name, John Jeffers, because I can't go to CR. I can't put CRN on there right now, just because I don't okay. have enough uh, subscribers or views for the videos. So that's why I, okay. I put it there. So we build that up. Everybody rate it. Hey, and you know what? If I'm wrong about something, I expect you, my listeners, to correct me, because I don't know everything. As much as everybody thinks I do, I don't. And I'm okay with being wrong. I'm okay with being corrected because, you know what, it's important to get the right information out there. That's the way I look at it. That's the way, you know, so that kind of thing. I see, uh, ah, Porky Wheel has joined the uh, Facebook uh, live feed. Very good. Thanks, sir, Porky Wheel. Appreciate it. Uh, something, oh, what did I tell Oh, yeah. I just, oh, I told you I would tell you about the 20 survival foods. So let's let me get to that because these are the twenty survival. Uh, I'm sorry, twenty survival foods that can last at least twenty years. For you new preppers and you old preppers out there, you might find something interesting, but something to get the conversation started because this is important stuff. And after that, I I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, communications in the grid down situation. So uh, let me get started. Let me get get this out there so we can all uh, talk about it and think about it here for a minute. Uh, you know, when disaster strikes, uh, no one ever knows when things will return to normal again. And in some cases, there may be the possibility of things never truly returning to normal. Uh, with this being the case, it's a good idea to stock up on foods that are meant for the long haul. Now, before we begin, it's important to note these foods will only last 20 or more years if they are stored properly in conditions that are dry, with stable temperatures, and limited light exposures. All right. So... Here are the 20 foods, survival foods, that can last at least 20 years. And some of these things, I, when I saw the list, I'm thinking, oh, I didn't know, I didn't think about that, and now I do. Number one is powdered milk. Now, unless you have a milk cow, enjoying milk post-disaster could be a challenge. However, thankfully, powdered milk can last 20 years or more, but only if it's non-fat, okay? I think, uh, oh, what was it, carnation. I think Carnation still makes the powdered milk. I'm, I, that, that's, that one seems to come to mind right off the bat, something that if I remember right. you know, I'm gonna, Next time I go to the grocery store, I'm going to look for it just to see if it's still on the shelf. Uh, dried beans. Hey, survival food staple. They can last up to 30 years if they're stored properly. Um, instant beans. If, you're, if you prefer your beans not to be dried, instant beans have a great shelf life as well. They last about 25-plus years. Uh, something else we talked about here, salt. Survival foods taste as good as the cuisine we are used to, but could be a challenge. So thankfully, salt has an indefinite shelf life, and it has many uses, if you really think about it. Of course, we've all talked about honey. Again, an indefinite shelf life. You can, allow, you can enjoy nature's sweetener, even if the apocalypse lasts a lifetime, so will your honey. It also has several other uses. Now, make sure you get the correct honey. Um, we talked about it, and I can't think of it offhand right now. There's a specific type of honey that actually acts as an antibiotic, and, I, and it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it. And I cannot remember the name of it, but I'm sure my listeners out there are already, you know. Actually, if you get local honey, it's got everything you need in it. Does it? Okay. For allergies and everything. Exactly. Um, you know one thing I noticed, and I'm glad you brought that up. Some of our uh, up here in northern Illinois during the uh, summer we have um, – well, uh, lawn care companies, and a lot of their workers, at, you know, in the early spring, they'll start taking a spoonful of ho local honey, like you said, because the local honey will help 
uh, for them uh, fight off for allergies. You, you got it, allergies and irritants and all the other stuff. So it's something to think about. There is something to that. Um, so again, I'm putting it out there for you. Uh, how about freeze dried fruit, meats, and vegetables? Now, from fruits and vegetables to chicken and beef, you can make most foods last 25 years if you keep them freeze dried. There you go. Um, we talked about freeze dried and dehydration, so uh, it might be worth it for your while. It might be worth your while, and depending on what your economic uh, stance is, if you got the money, you could buy your own freeze dried. Your own freeze dried, but it costs, it costs like three grand, twenty five hundred to three grand. I think that's what we talked about last week. You know, but it might be just as cheap as if you just buy, you know, mountain house or whatever, you know, freeze dried, whatever. It might be just, you know, economically make more sense for you that way. Uh, freeze dried cheeses. Now you're going to get a little less mileage out of the freeze drying cheese, but freeze dried cheese will still last about twenty years. Uh, oats. You enjoy a nice bowl of oats for breakfast in the morning. Got good news. Rolled and whole uh, oats are able to last 30 plus years in the right conditions. Uh, of course, we talked about dehydrated fruits and vegetables. Um, if you own a dehydrator, you have the ability to make fruits and vegetables last about 25 plus years. Uh, maybe. All right, pasta. Who doesn't like pasta? Who likes the carb high? I do. So you get the so if you appreciate the Italian food, we'll be happy to hear that pasta can last 30 plus years. So what you find to season it with may be more of a challenge, but the pasta itself has a great shelf life. Wheat, okay. Eh, okay, right. Look, white flour only has a shelf life of 10 years. Wheat, however, has a shelf life of 20 years, allowing you to make your own flour long after your pre-processed flour has gone bad. Um, something, okay, you know what, I'm not going to bring it up. Number 12 is cocoa powder. Who doesn't like chocolate? And, you know, post-apocalypse, we're all going to want chocolate. Hot chocolate, whatever, we're going to want our chocolate. And it will be a possibility thanks to the fact that cocoa powder will last 30-plus years. Now, no, you know, we're talking about cocoa powder, not the instant hot chocolate mix, which usually contains dairy. So the cocoa powder, all right? And if you get the, the, uh, get the, milk, the powdered milk, well, you should be good to go there. Potato flakes. Everybody loves potatoes. You won't be able to enjoy fresh potatoes long after a disaster unless you grow them yourself. But potato flakes will last 30-plus years. Now, sugar. If you want to sweeten your food or drinks, this sugar has an indefinite shelf life. That would be really tough in some climates, I would think. All right, white rice. large portion of the world gets by on a diet that is heavily dependent on white rice. After a disaster, the number of people sustaining themselves with white rice may increase even more since white rice has a shelf life of 30-plus years. Corn. Whether you eat it as is, grind it into cornmeal, store as, you know, or store lots of popcorn kernels, corn is a great survival food and has a shelf life of 30-plus years. Uh, maple syrup. Now, syrup lasts indefinitely thanks to its high sugar content. Now, sometimes mold can grow on top, but all you have to do is scrape it off and boil the syrup to kill it all. Uh, baking soda. It's another key baking ingredient with an indefinite shelf life. And like salt and honey, it has many alternative uses. Bouillon cubes. I don't know if I would consider that a food, but here you go. Uh, bouillon cubes have an indefinite shelf life, allowing you to add chicken and beef flavoring to your food long after the grid has gone down. And number 20... When I guarantee you, this is on Porky Wheels. A Porky Wheel, I'm sure, has an entire room just for this last one. Instant coffee. So you got to stay energized post-disaster by stocking up on instant coffee. Stored coffee, I'm sorry, stored properly, instant coffee will last you 30-plus years. What do you think? And I got, where did I find that? Oh, yeah, urbansurvivalsite.com. They got it, if you missed the list. Uh, and I also posted it on the stupid CRM question. page. Go ahead. There's no such as a stupid question. How long does peanut butter last? It doesn't say. But you know what? I think, I, I, no, I've, I got to tell you, I've gone an entire year with a jar of peanut butter that, that's been opened, and it's been fine. 
you know, sometimes the oil gets a little separated, but that's no big deal. You just mix it back in again. Yeah, you stir it, you stir it back in, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see, you know, I think peanut butter is, is an excellent uh, staple for any prepper or, pa- or uh, patriots, uh, so, you know, emergency supplies. Who the hell does like peanut butter? I mean, even people with, with you know, peanut allergies, they love peanut butter. They just can't have it. Plus, peanut butter has a lot well, of nutrition. Well, it's high in protein. Exactly. Well, so. It exists. It's high in protein. It's got a lot of good benefits for you. And, you know, it is what it is. Hmm. Tonight's drink is uh, by Antioxidant Infusion. I'm drinking the Brasilia Blueberry tonight. That's what, I, that's what's, that's what I'm drinking tonight. What are you drinking? Manuka Pork. honey. That's what it is. Manuka honey. Thank you, Porky Wheel. He got it for me. Uh, Tim's in the... Where is Tim? Oh, yeah. Tim's in North Carolina. Tim, I'll send you that information from Billy after the show. I forgot to get it to you, but I'll take care of it. Um, if you are in western North Carolina, I have a prepper looking for a group or is looking for a mutual assistance type uh, group situation. Get a hold of me at ContraRadio at Live.com, ContraRadio at Live.com, so I can pass your information and get you guys hooked up, and you guys can decide what it is you want to do. So there. Uh, what, else are we ta- what else are we talking about? Okay. Uh, Tim's Rants is in the chat room. Very good. Well, what do you want to talk about tonight, sir? Go ahead. <laughs> you talking to me? I am. Oh, uh what uh, did you see about what that happened in Afghanistan this morning? Mm, I don't think so. Fire away. What happened? They had, supposedly had some big bombing, and uh, the Taliban claimed not responsible. <laughs> and they figured now ISIS did it. Are and, you? Uh, you know, we can, I bet. I imagine ISIS is going to start eating up the groups like Al Qaeda and the Taliban, and just you know make them into one big organization. But that's okay. We can still. Well, yeah, I figured they all. I figured they all merged together. I didn't know. Well, yeah. It's all right. It's a bombing of course, couple. Then this week we also we also got that redheaded dame. I can't think of what her name is. That had an amputated false Donald Trump head. Oh, Kathy Griffin. And now she's losing. She realized. I also didn't say her name. You know, I know. I wanna, did not say her name. I know. I did. You know what? And one thing we want to know is, you know, first of all, I didn't know that Skeletor got married, but to be. You know, now she realizes from the backlash, one, how unfunny she is. I never thought she was all that funny to begin with. But now she realizes just I never how, liked myself. No, never mind. how unfunny she is and how irrelevant she has become. And you know what? Good. Go away. I think she needs to go to jail. Um, I think she needs to be put in jail because, uh, you know, if we threaten to do something like that, they arrest us for it. I don't see what makes her any different. I'll tell you what. And it's my contention, and God forbid anything happen to President Trump. Anything happens to him, the American left is going to be destroyed because there will be people in the streets. You know, we talked about that goofy liberal prepping group that they, uh, last uh, sun, on Sunday night, and i got to tell you something. You know, they're so worried they're going to become hunted by the right wing and all that. You wouldn't have to worry about being hunted by the right wing if you weren't such a bunch of jackasses to begin with. And still. Start with. That's right. You know what? You brought it on yourself with your socialist and just, you know, your, just your outlook on life, your worldview. You brought it on yourself. I don't want to hear. Stop complaining. You brought it on yourself. Deal with it. Oh. One of my Facebook friends posted a picture of her face along with the Chucky doll. <laughs> it quite a bit alike. <laughs> I had to just turn around and share it and repost it, but yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, <laughs> Tim. You know, Tim in the chat room is right. He says she's not sorry about it. She's sorry for herself because now she's losing sponsors. She's got you know she's losing money. Her That's the reason she's sorry yeah. about it. She just no. She's not. Yeah, she's she, she yeah. just she's just sorry that she was a complete dumbass and didn't realize it. Well, maybe she'll get the message now. So I'm just hopefully I'm, it'll make her be in the force for early retirement. Well, 
I'm still, I'm sure to the left. The She's a hero to the left, I'm sure. But like a lot of... Do what? You know, I'm sure she's still a hero to the left. Now, granted, a lot of people on the left said, no, you're way over the line on this. And you know what? Kudos to you. Even Chelsea Clinton did not like it. You know what? <laughs> you know, I, and, and good, you know what? And I think the president was right when he said, you know what? My 11-year-old son is bothered by this. You know, mm -hmm. it should, you know, it should be. He should be. You know, there's no excuse for that behavior. There just isn't. But on the other hand, well, and see, the you, left, got people that, you got people that are doing this as a joke. It's not a there's joke. There's people that actually literally do it. They will. And there that's will be. The sad part. I know that 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 that's the whole point. Hmm. I saw that um, Antifa in New Jersey desecrated veterans' graves sites over the weekend. Saying that 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 their soldiers are so much more better than the capitalist pig soldiers, you know what? I'll take the capitalist pig soldiers any day, any time, anywhere over Antifa's soldiers. Any time, any day. Just say when and where. No problem. I'll take the retired did guys over there. Did they get arrested for doing that? I don't know yet. I don't have a clue on that one. I don't know. Because, boy, if they didn't, that's just, that's just sad. Well, yeah. That's a special kind of evil they're doing. Well, these are the people that generally like all the benefits of our constitutional republic, but they don't want any of the responsibilities. That's right. They would, they, they would much rather have uh, the makers take care of them, the people that actually produce something for society, that actually do things for society. You know, and, mo and don't forget, most of these I'm clowns... I'm surprised they have the energy. No. I'm well, surprised they have the energy from my mom and dad's basement. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Most of Antifa, they're all trust fund retards. They're all from middle class or upper middle class families who have money. You know. And so, yeah, you're a bunch, you know. Uh, the one video we had of the Antifa kid... When he fires off a succession of shots, yelling, I don't live in my mom's basement. Yes, you do. You know it. I know it. We all know it. You live in your mom's basement. Yep. Don't say you don't. And I don't. And he's, mad, and he's mad because people are calling him out. Right. The video was a, was a riot. Um, there's a few of us. Would you like was... to walk down that basement and just slap the crap out of him over the top of his couch and throw him out in the street? No, sir. I'd rather lock him in the basement and keep him there. Here, you like it so much here? You are such an extreme keyboard <laughs> yeah. warrior. Oorah. Carry on. I um, hope I hope your prep report put this padlock on here because you're going to need it now. <laughs> Speaking of padlocks, I see the professor at Ant at one of the, at the uh, college there that was uh, that took to beating a Trump supporter with a bag of padlocks has not only been fired but he's been arrested and charged with felony. I believe felony battery and maybe second degree murder, attempted murder. Um, so, yeah, he's really screwed now. So he's, you know, he can, he can go live out his life. He wants to be, a, you know, he wants the state to take care of him. No problem. We'll put you at the Gray Bar Hotel and you stay there for a few years. Idiot. Hopefully it's more than a few years. Oh, I'm, well, I'm, well, look at this way. If everybody else's correction system is like Illinois, in Illinois, once you're sentenced, you get credit for your time served. So if you're sitting in jail before your trial, you get credit for that time time for uh, you know, credit for time served already. Then you get day for day credit. So for every day you do well, you get a day credit. So if you manage not to get yourself raped, beaten, or doing that to others, and you you know, guess what? For every day you serve, you get a day of credit. So generally speaking, by the time it's really all said and done, you're cutting almost, you know, your time in half. So if you get eight years, you're looking at maybe four years or less. So if you, but I don't know how that is around the country. I'm just, you know, saying I suppose it could very well be uh, along there the same thing. Okay. I'm trying to see what we got going on in the chat room here. 
They're still talking about cats. That's all right. A little odd for the chat room, but that go right ahead. I mean, well, I opened the door. You know, I opened the door to it, so you know, I can't complain. All right. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, have you heard anything going? Any fresh news from the North Korean thing? From the other missile they shot off? You know, um, let me think. Oh, wait a minute. I did, did I hear something? Well, I understand that the United States did successfully intercept uh, a target missile during a test. That would make President Reagan oh, extremely proud. Extremely proud to know that. So they did years. actually stop it. Yeah, they were. It, it was a test. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. It was a test. It was a test shot, and it worked. You know, it, think of it this way: it's kind of like uh, shooting down a bullet with another bullet in midair. Mm -hmm. so you know, it takes some uh, talent, some technology, some some really good mathematics. But, of course, I, you know, this country was able to do it. Uh, other than that, I heard, I'd also heard that uh, China is really just putting the kibosh on the North Korean economy right now. So, you know, it's interesting to see what they will do. It's very interesting to see. So... You know, I still wait and see. Don't forget, you know, the guy, you know, Kim is like a petulant child. He throws a temper tantrum. He's kind of, well, he's kind of, kind of like the leftist, um, you know, university students. They don't get their way. They throw their temper tantrum. They scream and shout and want this. They want that. You'll get nothing and like it. There. All right. What else yeah. we got going on tonight? I have no, no NK, nah. Yeah, they are. Look, they're gonna they're gonna push the envelope until one they don't get a reaction. Until the, and they may be forced into a desperate corner where they do something really stupid, you know, and then that's gonna cause a real backlash on them. So, I think um, you know God. You know the the Japanese have already the Japanese government says they will work with the United States in concert to put the clamps down on North Korea, mainly because you know I could see them you know taking a pot shot at Japan. They you know North Koreans don't usually have usually have done something like that on occasion, but regardless, that guy's so, that guy's so dumb you don't know what he's going to do. He is kind of unpredictable. Actually, you know what do you, you know? Yeah, I mean. But as long as he stays within his cage, and his, you know, as long as he stays in his box and doesn't venture out from it, not not our problem. It's when he starts venturing out of it. Exactly. Now, now it becomes an issue. Uh, I don't care about the Paris deal. I think it's good that we're pulling out of it. That's for Porky Wheel. He just typed it in there. I actually agree with us. Pull out. Why the hell are we, are we spending $100 trillion, $100 million, or whatever it is, to lower the temperature on the planet 0 0.03 degrees. That will be accomplished in a in 100 years. How in the hell did the United... You know, that's what I blame about this administration. And one thing I want you all to know, if you don't live in Illinois, tonight is the budget deadline for the state of Illinois. I want you to, if you could, bear with me. It's been two years since Illinois had a balanced budget. Probably longer than that. However... If you look at government as a whole, government always says, we don't have enough money. They never say, we spend too much. Illinois is a prime case. All the money in the world for pet projects, right and left, they haven't paid their bills. The, uh, the interest and fees on their $14.5 billion dollars is now approaching $800 million. It's almost a billion dollars just in interest and fees. And yet these fools, oh no. What we do is we worry about whether or not restaurants should have to label fish and where it came from. That's a priority for the Illinois legislature. And I'm sure there are many states, not all of them, but many states that had the same doddering, foolish state legislature who just won't do anything about it. Now, Illinois has extremely high property taxes. It's ridiculous. 
all the states surrounding Illinois have much lower property taxes. Because, and if you ask anybody in the state government, well, how do you come up with these numbers, with this factor that they multiply everybody's uh, home valuation and property valuation by? And they're going to tell you, uh, we don't know, Senator. No one knows. No one can give you an, an adequate explanation. Nobody. But yet we still keep doing this. Now, you listen to the left side of the aisle. Well, we need the money for schools and roads and infrastructure and child care and the whining and the bed wetting and the handwriting just never ends. There are other states who have who pay a lot less in property taxes and they have roads, they have schools, they have public infrastructure, they have everything. The problem is with the state of Illinois, it's always we don't have enough money. It's never, ever well, we spend too much. And what is this goofy thing? Well, you can't have a cut unless it's revenue neutral. No, that's made up. A tax cut in and of itself is revenue neutral. It cuts taxes. It cuts money. Oh, well, if you don't have it. I see Mr. Linder is on the Facebook Feed. Welcome, sir. Welcome. You have submit. I tell you what's irritated a lot of folks here. What's that? Because, uh, our 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 uh, goofy governor he wants to put a fourteen cent sales tax on our gas to help fix the bridges in the road. Fourteen cents a gallon. If I'm understanding it right, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Illinois, and uh, he's really done some. He's really done some <laughs> stupid stuff. <laughs> yes, submit and obey to the will of the state. Illinois had it has uh, used to have a nickel tax, and I can I guarantee you that money isn't going to roads and bridges. It isn't. You all see the roads. It looks like it's been hit yeah, by they, a mortar attack around they, here sometimes. They say, they say it'll go to the roads, but it'll go probably line the governor's pocket for some party down the road. Oh, I'm sure it is. Oh, it, you know, it never goes where they say it's going to go. There's always, oh, we didn't know this. We we need the money for this instead. No. You know, that's the problem. i tell you, for the ones that didn't get to hear the show, uh, Don's show, um, I, I forget tonight. Is it Saturday Friday, night? Friday. Friday. Uh, she had a very good show on that. Don's With show is growing. Don's show is growing. That is true. Yeah, very, very good show. It's, it's, very good show. You no, know, she's oh, she's hitting her stride. Believe me. Let me see what we got here. What what Porky Will says? Oh, Porky Will see in um, Northern Ireland, they have to pay carbon taxes. Yes, carbon taxes, and that money doesn't go to Northern Ireland. It goes to Europe, part of the EU, I believe. <laughs> so. This nonsense of, you know. I figured he was to polish the crown. The crown. You know, I am waiting for the people in the, in the U.K. and in Ireland to rise up and say enough's enough. You get enough people, and, and I, know, I know this is just a pipe dream because Porky Wheel already told me the people over there are so beaten already, they just don't care anymore. But you would think that after the Manchester bombing, and the fact that, you know, it wasn't one guy, it's a whole network. At some point in time, the people in Britain and in UK and in Ireland need to rise up and say, we want our weapons back, period. And raise holy hell until they give in. Yeah, because it's the criminals that have the guns, not the, not the citizens. The criminals always have the guns. That's why they're criminals, by very definition. That's right. That's right. And, the, you know, whether the crown needs the money or not, I think the people need the ability, the right to have a firearm or two. And I'm not talking a shotgun with 200 shells max. I'm talking you should be able to have, they should be able to have just like we have in the United States. That's what true, look, exactly. for all you people out there who, who are new to the show, I want you to understand something here. The Second Amendment makes all the other amendments legal and possible without the government long, 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 long time ago. 
So it is the Second Amendment that keeps all the others legal and alive. Why do you think the left wants to get rid of the Second Amendment? Because they like big government. They want the government to run every aspect of their lives. You yep, and they'd like to take our guns away from us. Right. Just so they could stick their tongue out and go, oh, see, we did it. Unfortunately for them, I think even if, let's just say, for example, they went ahead and make the Second Amendment null and void. There's enough Americans alive today. This will be an intergenerational fight for the government to try and get rid of firearms out of private individuals' hands for generations. Because they may make, just because you make it illegal does not mean it won't be so it won't be made. It won't there. be sold. They will find their way to where they have to be. You know, but they don't. But the left doesn't understand that. The government will know. It's a gener. It will be a generational fight for a very, very, very long time. So, and besides, well, it gets me like with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama wanted to, and when they was running for president, they they wanted the guns to be taken away. You know, so all they all, they didn't want their guards to be not armed. People, they wanted everybody else to be unarmed. People, people who go around with armed bodyguards have nothing to add and nothing to say about gun control. Period. They get That's nothing. Right. They don't. Well, who we got here? Go ahead, sir. You're on CRN. Mm-hmm. Screw people, bodyguards. Yep. Ah. This is Mr. Chuck. Welcome to the show, sir. Chuck, are you there? He's here. Oh yeah, I was trying. I was. I was trying to finish up my my mouthful of food. So I didn't want to talk on the phone with my mouthful. So. As Porky Wheel says in the chat room, "Fight to the death for your Second Amendment." Because once it's gone, they will never, ever, ever give it back. Never. Even the dog knows. The dog is even smart enough to know it. So I put it out yeah. there to you patriots. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. To your patriots and preppers out there, fight to the death for your Second Amendment rights. Because once it, if they take it, you'll never get it back. Case in point, Hitler... Banned. He he had national gun control. And they they snagged all their weapons out of private citizens' hands. To this day, the private citizens still don't get to have their weapons back. You people in the UK, hear me loud, hear me clear. And though you know, I gave up on the French. They they chose their medicine, their bed. They're going to have to lie in it for a while because it hasn't become painful enough for them but it will soon. The people in the UK have spoken, of course, by through Brexit. They need to rise up in a popular, massive, loud, uncontrollable demonstration week after week after week and force their government to give them their right to own a firearm. They need to do that. The days of the government will protect you are over. Case in point. I submit to you, Paris, France, national gun control, but yet somehow they were able to, the terrorists were able to get automatic weapons into France. That's how gun control does not work. I'll tell you what I've noticed. You see in these northern areas where stuff happens, it's all where there's no where there's no guns allowed. Right. You know, type of scenarios. This the gun and wherever there's an armed guard at gun and zone. schools all our schools here. They have armed guards, and every one of the schools here, very seldom you ever see anything about a school shooting. And you won't. And you won't. Because everybody is armed. As they should. Everybody is armed. They don't, they're too scared. I'm not going to say too scared, but most of them are too scared to mess with somebody that they think might be back in to start with. You know? Look, the bottom line is this. A good guy with a gun can change everything. You only see... You know, the school shootings in schools that don't have armed guards. They're, they're gun-free zones. Everybody's going to do that. No, they're not, and they don't. Your mass shootings well, take place in gun-free another, zones. As a prepper and a patriot, 
because long, long before the state of Illinois even, you know, eventually they were the latest one to finally accept, um, you know, the the, the uh, CCW or the uh, or the concealed uh, weapons concept. Yeah. Chicago, Chicago, you know, if you want to see an example of a, of, of a, a city of people who are stuck on stupid, definitely Chicago. Oh. Uh, is a prime example because what we have is that somehow they, 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 I don't know how the hell they came to this conclusion. Hey, if we pay guns, no one will get hurt. But yet now what they have is a city full of bad guys with criminal records who have guns and they're killing other people. Right. And they're so not they're even obtaining those guns to, legally. They're, they're willing, unwilling to admit it. They're unwilling to admit it and they're not ever going to. Yeah, it's our fault that we allowed the criminals to have guns. They I will think that's, never, that's, that's the, uh, that's, in, in my mind, that is the very, very thing that they should be attacked on, is that all you do is, by, by having gun control, you basically render your citizenship uh, of, your, of your city helpless to crime and, and, allow the, uh, and, and allow the criminals to have guns. And even though if it's illegal, they're still going to get them. And, you know, the... the if this was an experiment, the result of the experiment has long been finished oh, and, yeah. and available for a long time. But, but for some reason, no, those guys just don't get it. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, they get it. Maybe the problem is pro- they will never they give up the idea. Lobotomy. I have no idea. They will never give up on that idea, and I'll tell you why. Because they get paid. Oh, we're a charity. We're against guns. Oh, really? Well, so are we, so we'll give you, you know, so the corporation chucks out some money for this and for that. If they weren't, if they didn't get paid for their goofy ideas, they wouldn't put it out there. Think of all those goofy-ass companies that in 2000, in 2000, in 2014, 2015, 2016, who decided to start shelling out money to all the liberal nutcases. Oh, you know, and or they fell in line. For example... Starbucks, prime example. Oh, we're going to give money to this cause, and we're going to give jobs to refugees. You know, screw you veterans. we got to give them to refugees. You know, it's this sign of, uh, uh, what's it called, Fair, uh, Fair Life pro, uh, Dairy Products, which you see in your grocery store. They give a million dollars to BLM. Guess what? I don't buy that product anymore. You're not going to use my money for that. Uh, you look at Target, for example. Target's a prime example. Started towing the goofy liberal line. They also, you know, think of all the companies who think it's a good idea, or, or, or who told who told the chairman or the board, yeah, we need to get in on this. This is a public relations, you know, coup. This would be really great for the company. And then they do it. Word gets out, and what happens? Normal American citizens say, screw you, we're not going to buy your product anymore. Not going to do it. Yeah, that's right, Tim, I don't either. I don't spend a penny at Starbucks or Target. I gave up on them a long time ago. I won't even do it for Walmart. You know, I mean, when they, you know, they need to stop buying all their crap from China and start buying their stuff from the United States. So if Sam Walt was alive today... He would have never, ever bought anything from China. All his stuff was made in America. Well, the kid, you know, he died, the kids took over, and they went to China. I will not do it. And I'll tell you, if you go to Walmart, really try to look for the Made in USA logo, you won't find too many products. No, you won't. That's the and problem. And the sad part is it's that way pretty much everywhere. You know. Um, One thing I do is... I look, and I agree with you. The products are getting smaller and smaller, and you know, in terms of trying to find out who's actually, or what's actually made in the United States. I will, you know, when I buy a, a big ticket item, I look to see. Okay, I try to find out as much as I can. It, if the majority of this product is made in the United States, you know, I'll bite the bullet and do it. I will not, not, at all. If it's made in China, forget it. I'll pay the extra money. And I did that at Menards. Garden hoe. $5 for the one made in China. $8 for the one made in, the United St- in, in Indiana, in the United States. I said, you know what? I'll spend the extra $3 because it saves some American's job. I'll do that. 
Menards well, should be ashamed of it. it to start with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chuck, they want to know what's for dinner in the chat room. They want to know what you're eating. Uh, marinated short ribs, my friend. Uh, it was left over from um, mm-hmm. Memorial Day barbecue. Mm-hmm. And just basically. And not only that, though, but uh, I'm also working tonight, so I had to sleep throughout the day. And um, my wife, for some reason, she came home. Yeah. And now she left the barbecue restaurant with my neighbors, and all this happened while I was sleeping, and she's not back yet. So I'm, I'm probably going to get more food in, in when they get back, though. So at least I'm getting something out of it, but just talk. <laughs> you know what? Support your local businesses. And it's like uh, Pat says in the Facebook uh, chat room on the video. Support local and buy small business. Small business is the cornerstone of this country. Support them. Spend an extra few bucks. You're saving somebody's job somewhere down the line. That's right, Pat. Rather spend a few extra bucks to save somebody's job down the line. Absolutely. What do we got here? What well, we... you know, we're fortunate. We still, we're still, we're very fortunate because we have uh, produce stands in town that are local farmers. Yes, that's all they call a farmers market. Farmers market. We got them and, up here. Uh, yeah. We're very, we are very fortunate we have that because you cannot literally buy local from your small area where you're from, and it ain't going out to the bigger towns that are 60 and 80 miles away. You know. Well, you know, you got, you know, I think the farmers in this country get a shaft. They get shafted all the time. I, they do. I, you know, they don't. No one. People who live in the urban areas have no clue what it takes to be a farmer. You got to only now. You have to know about agriculture. You got to know about business, how money works. You have to know how to repair things, because if you can repair things and make it last that much longer, you're good to go for you know x amount of time before you have to go out and buy something else. And the bottom line yeah, is. I tell you something. If you price farm equipment, yeah, it's high. It's very high. In the seventies, late sixties, early seventies, the American farmer was rocking and rolling. They got fair price for their products on the market, and they were able to go to John Deere, an international harvester, and buy, uh, you know, all these great, you know, these big pieces of equipment, whether it's a combine or whatever. However. When the government started screwing with their with the farmer, you know, the marketplace, the international marketplace, that's when you saw all the farms going bankrupt, because all of a sudden the money that they were making, you know, until the government came in and screwed everything up. Well, guess what? They couldn't make those payments anymore, so a lot of the farms went under. If you were alive in the 80s, you remember farms being auctioned mm-hmm. off that were in families for 150 years. And the way they got Go on. you remember that? Yep. And remember people's ch- shouting, no sale, no sale, no sale. They would, you know, and but still a lot of the co-ops ended up going in there and buying up the family's farm and, you know, and it was sad. To this day, the American farmer feel the American farmer feeds the world to this day. And they and do I can, it. I can remember in that time frame you're talking about. Remember, there are some farmers that actually went to bank and killed the bankers. Oh yeah, they had had it. And you know what? I don't blame them. I don't either. You know, and, and sometimes that's what you know it takes for. Um, what is that, Tim? Tim Tim's in the chat room. He says we were having a huge problem subbing out machine work to local shops because the quality is lacking. He says, even metal finishing like anodized aluminum, quality is just a joke. And it's stupid stuff like parts being dropped or banged up. Re- and Porkville says, retraining is needed. I got a better idea. You get retrained once. And if you're still screwing up and you're ruining somebody's business, you don't need to be working there. It's, the problem is, and, and this is true too, look, I was in a union. I didn't particularly care for it, but... That's the way that it worked. One thing is you have to remember that if you're in a federal government and you have a union, you are not able to bargain for your wages and benefits. What they have them there for is for employee protection. So that's why you saw so many employees at the VA 
who you know were misused, who were abusing, and hiding, and resulting in veterans' deaths, and manipulating the schedule, trying to do all that. They couldn't get fired because it takes almost an act of God to get a federal employee fired. That has to stop. It's just like if you work if you work for a private corporation, a private company. If you're company, not doing your job, you need to be fired. Exactly. If you're not doing it, if you if you're in the private sector, you would be fired for not doing your job or doing it shabbily or whatever. There's no excuse for that. Look, you don't want to do the job, fine. It's is not a communist country. You can you don't like your job, great. Quit and go find a job you like. No one is forcing you to work at that right. particular job. So yeah, exactly. Uh, right. All right. And Pat's right. Oh, what is, you know, he's on a roll in here, man. Cool. It is kind of like Mayberry. You're right. And what else I got here? Um, what else have we talked? We talked about the food, uh, food storage. Let me ask you this: If you're out there, any of you? Because we know we got some people in. How long? does peanut butter last before you can't eat it anymore? Tim says he has a jar from 2014 that he's still working on. And it's just fine. Yes, I've seen it three and four years old and it's never been bad. That's why I was wondering. Right. I, I, you know, I, it's like, I wonder what it is. Um, it's a good thing to have in your preps. Put a case of peanut butter in your preps, in your supply catch. You never, you know, and don't worry about it. You know, make sure it's all in there. I see John Theo has joined in the uh, CRN Facebook. John Theo has been one of our guests here on CRN. I'm glad to see him. Welcome back, John. You know, John has some, I think John's in the middle of moving, or, or maybe he already has. He's leaving the Northeast of the United States to better climes and a better environment overall. So I'm glad to see John here in the Facebook chat room here on the video feed. Very nice. All right, what do we got there? Um, I know we've got we have we, we've dehydrated vegetables and then grinded them up, made powder out of them. And when you get a a, a quart size jar full of powder per se, you get whatever you're cooking. All you do is take a spoonful out and drop it in. You'd be surprised how much vegetables you just dropped in that liquid that you're hmm. making with your supper. That's and, not a bad but idea. But we've had some of that stuff set five years. We've had some of that set five years, and it's just as good as when we put it in the jars. Oh yeah. You know, there's a lot that can be done here, and the problem is, you know, trying to get the word out for prepping. If you if you know this, and we're actually in a very humid state as well. So. Oh, you are. Yes. No argument. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, was that it? No, I think that's it. You know what? We're on autopilot, so whatever you guys want to talk about, fire away. We're on autopilot right now. Notice it's been dead silent now. I turn it over well, to I, you guys. I no, nobody's. It's just Chuck's, you know, stuff in his face right now. That's fine. So he'll join us when he can. So have at it, Gary. What do you want to talk about? Huh? Well, you was going so good on it. I was just like, <laughs> it's all right, buddy. I I, I, th I just think it's important that uh, people realize what's coming to them before it's too late, you know. And, and like say, as simple as what happened here over the week, there was a lot of people just left with nothing just because they just didn't have a thought of maybe make sure my generator runs or we may actually lose power type scenario. And a lot of these older people, I mean, they, they're stuck, you know. You know, and it's sad because the older folks usually the ones who kind of prepare for a little more. You know? And the older folks know better. Most, some of them lived through the Great Depression, or they were children during the Great Depression, so they know what to expect or what happens. I'm. On the other hand, you know, when you look at prepping, prepping has got such a a bad reputation undeservedly so but nonetheless you know it is what it is yeah you know in ways in ways we almost get targeted oh yeah on some of the stuff you see they say well he was a prepper and right. you know there's nothing wrong with preparing for something wrong to happen i agree you know uh, 
you know, my dad's 74 years old, and he's not in the best of health, but, you know, power goes out. He's got something he can kick his power on and keep right on going with. And, you know, he's usually pretty good for five to eight days, and, you know, his his health ain't the best, you know. So, and uh, he, he's got means of cooking for a month. I mean, he's not going to starve as long as, medica- as, long as he got his medication for the month. He's pretty much good to go, you know. Right. And a lot of these other ones that are younger, I mean, they don't have a clue. All right. I my dad, he grew up on a farm, and he, he worked his whole life, you know. Most farmers do. They don't have a great retirement, the farmers. And they will work for as long as they can. And they're good people. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as you're a decent human yeah, being, a, most farmers guy, will... There's a guy down the road. He's in his upper 80s. He still plants watermelons every year. We're talking 50 right. acres with watermelons. Wow. He's in his upper 80s. Okay. This is also I wanted to talk to you about out there, my prepping and uh, people. You know, a while back... Somebody was asking about communications. Um, we've talked about this on previous episodes, but let's go over it again real quickly. Let's, let, let, let's touch on it. There's a couple things you can do for prepping, for communications. Obviously, standing next to the person is fine. But if the grid goes down, and God forbid there's an EMP, because that that, that's just going to wreck every communication plan you practically have. But... With that said, you could use walkie-talkies, you could use GMRS radios, you can use a CB, which works on the AM band, you could use ham radio. And if you really want to get crazy and you got a lot of money to burn, you could use a satellite telephone, which I don't recommend because it's an EMP, that, that's, especially if it's an uh, airburst all over in space, it's going to wipe out a bunch of satellites real fast. Now, what I really want to talk to you about is this. Okay, you got your prepper group. Do you have a communications officer? That is, do you have somebody that knows how to operate radios? Do they have a radio shack? Do they have a dedicated space within your retreat or within your command post or within your AO that is strictly, it's a radio shack? It is strictly for communications. Do you have that? If not, you got to get one. You got to put one together. You got to get a communications officer. I would suggest getting someone licensed. For example, you don't have to have top, you know, the top uh, ham radio license. Go for the technician license. That gets you licensed. It gets you into the uh, ham radio world. Gives you a chance to play around and learn how to use it. Now. Let's say you have a prepper group. For example, we have the 11th APG. 11th APG has a lot of different units or cells of people all over the, you know, all over the place in this country. Not as many as I would like, but we need more. My point is this. If you have the ham radio and you got a, and you got access to a repeater tower that is operating, you can bounce your signal all over the planet. Now, Let's say it's a grid down situation. You need to have a communications officer along with a communications staff. You need to keep your uh, equipment up and running almost, you know, I would say 24 hours a day for a while right after the grid goes down because you've got to get information. You've got to figure out what's going on, what's happening, who's doing what, who's talking to who, that kind of thing. Now, granted, when the grid goes down, the FCC isn't going to give a flying flip about whether or not you have a license to operate ham because they're going to have bigger fish to fry, like trying to put the grid, their communications grid back together. Now, what if we have, you have a problem where you think you have um, a monitor, someone who's listening in on your stuff who probably shouldn't be listening in on your net? You, be, you have to have a plan, an, an operational plan B to go to. So, for example, let's say we have, um, let's say, uh, a rival, or no, yeah, let's say it's a. Uh, can I come back? Can I, can I comment on that? Be, sure, go ahead. Okay. 
the whole ham radio thing is a good idea. Um, and yes, for that, it, it does require a license. If the grid goes down, I think leaving uh, a, a radio operating 24-7 to monitor and get as much information as possible for the first few initial days is, is a good idea. Uh, after that, it, it becomes a, a compromise of, of operational security, in which case uh, the more that, that you have your radio on and, and – is that once the grid goes down, thank you, uh, power is in very limited supply, a very finite limited supply. And and as such, you know, you, you have to use it wisely and decide, well, should I use the power that I have to, you know, keep, keep lights on in my home at night, or should I just use it for my ham radio? Um, I think most ham radio uh, operators, being electronically minded, <coughs> excuse me, uh, will probably be proactive to get you know all alternative sources of power like solar panels, batteries, uh, and, and maybe wind wind turbines, so that that source of power is renewed. Um, but the average American, probably not. So I just wanted to. Uh, chime in with that regarding the whole uh, regarding the, the concept of having a ham radio, but in a world where power isn't available or in in unlimited supply. Right. Look, ham radio ham radio doesn't use a lot of energy. It doesn't. What you're going to use a lot of the energy on, and hopefully you'll, you'll be able to do that by before then, is on the repeater tower. Like I said, you're going to need to have somebody manning your communications equipment almost. I don't, you know, all day, you know, uh, 24 hours a day. Now, you got somebody monitoring you that you don't, you're not sure, or somebody burst in on your radio net. They may, let's just say they're not even a bad guy. You don't even know who it is. They come on your net, on your secure net with your other groups, your mutual assistance groups. You need to have a plan B to go into effect immediately. Plan B is we go to an, we immediately, go to a different frequency immediately. Whether it be sideband or not, that's your choice. Immediately go to a different frequency. You should have, your equipment should be able to uh, put out an alarm tone to alert all stations on the net. Go to plan B. Boom. And you go to a different frequency. Um, and like, for example, if you're far enough away, I might not hear the person intrude on the net. Chuck may hear it. Chuck should have the ability and the authority, if that happens, to go. And he gets on the air and say, all stations on the net, go to plan B. Hits the alarm tone, hits the alarm tone again, makes another announcement, and go. Everybody switches. However, because Chuck initiated, Chuck initiated the plan B, he can go back and speak to whoever it is on the net. Come back and report to people on the plan B frequency. And once you use the plan B frequency, you gotta come up with another frequency. And then you gotta get that out. That's why a CEOI is an excellent piece of equipment that you have to make. I don't I have never seen one for sale. I have never seen you're gonna have to make your own. We've talked about the CEOIs. The CEOIs are very simple. They're list. 30 days. Every 30 days, you put, there's a different call sign for the month. Every So that way, for example, Chuck wants to talk to me. I think it's Chuck. Chuck thinks he's got hold of my commo guy, but he's not sure. He's never met him. So Chuck will authenticate. Chuck will say, I authenticate you know, uh, you know, Alpha Echo 7. I, and my guy would respond, and it has to be on that day, that particular uh, response would, would would be, I authenticate, you know, Foxtrot Golf 4. That way, Chuck looks in the COI, there's my call sign, that's the, that's the correct authentication sign. He knows he's actually talking to the right people he wants to. 
Do I, am I making sense? Do, do, do you do understand? Yes? Does, am I making sense to you? You are. You're, you're basically talking about ways to confirm each other's identity. Um, right. We've got to confirm who we're talking to. If we find somebody that's, right. break, uh, that's broken into the net, look, if the net is really not that secure. It's just by airwave. So if you, let's say Gary, who's not authorized to be on the net, we don't know who he is, he breaks in, you hear him, but the rest of us don't. Call for a plan, you know, all stations on the net. Switch to plan B. Now, your COI should have, a, you know, a plan B, C, D, E, and right down the line. Because you never know who's listening. If somebody, if you think you're being monitored, then tell people that they think we're being monitored. You could always go to a different frequency, but everybody's got to know what frequency to go to. Ah. Get to Mayberry. <laughs> also, a source, also a source, uh, a source material for code phrases. Usually, one of the best things to use is, is uh, a book. Hmm. Make sure that all the stations that are in your listening network, if you will, have the same book. Yes, line. absolutely correct. So the code phrase can be every. Yeah, so the code phrase can be. No, you're right. A string of words from a particular title, particular page, right. particular paragraph uh, of, of that book. So that's, that's another way to go. You could do that, but it, 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 it might take a bit longer. But, again, like you said, it's very secure, but everybody's got to have the same book. Um, well, I think what we're talking, you know, once you authenticate who it is you're actually talking to. Now, don't forget, everybody in the mutual assistance group has to have a copy, either the same book or the copy of the COI. Now is the time the grid is up to make a CEOI because, like I said, you got to do it every 30 days. And it, has to be, and it can't be the same 30 days. Once you're done with that 30-day page on the book on the COI, burn it. Get rid of it. Burn it and go to the second month, month two, COI. And it'll say month two, and then it'll say day one, day two, day three, day four. You understand? We're with you guys are with me, right? I mean, you got twelve, you got twelve months of the year, so you'd have a, you got twelve different Correct. settings set up for the month. Right, but but just remember, you can't put the year in because, for example, you know what might be the uh, you know it might be a leap year the following year, it might be a leap year this year, you know, depending on when the grid goes down. But again, mm -hmm. the COI is very adaptable. Let's say you know the fourth month into a grid down situation is a leap year. Then we got that 29th day instead of 28 days in February. So what you do is you go ahead on that, you know, page four, page five, you know, whatever it is, and you go to day 29. Then when the, after day 29, tear it out. Even though there's two more days, there might be two more days left on that, but because the calendar says it's a leap year, the 29th, get rid of it, burn it, and go to the next page. And it, And they can't. What what might be easier to do with a COI is getting a random uh, number generator. That would work too. Something to think about while you print out a COI. Every unit in your prepper group needs to have one. Period. It doesn't matter whether they're talking on a GMRS radio, a CB, a walkie-talkie, a ham radio, whatever. That COI is how you preserve the integrity of the radio communications net within your group. Does it make sense? Is, there, is everybody following? Okay. Oh, yes. I, that's what it, make sure. it does make sense. You, know, you have to have a way to communicate with the world when it, when it does happen, even if you're just listening in to find out what the latest news is as far right. as if it's in your area. No, no, no. I get it. Um. And I'll tell you another good thing to also have, along with everything for, for preparation, is a good weather station because you have to be able to monitor what's going on anyway. Well, yeah. You don't have communication. No, 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 no. You should. I get it. And you, you know, if if it's up and running, sure. But again, if you have a large enough prepper group where you have different units everywhere, there's nothing to say you can't put out, you know, the westernmost. 
unit can't put out a weather report saying, yeah, it's raining here or, or whatever it is. You know, again, if the uh, National Weather Service puts together a great class, it's like a one-day, it's not even a one-day class, it's like a, a two-and-a-half, three-hour class, and it's called uh, for uh, it's a trained weather spotter class. It's great. It's very informative, and most of the time, in fact, every time I've seen it, it's free. You just got to show up at that time, wherever they ask you, whatever in the class, you do it and you get your certification. It's that quick and that easy. Something to really think about that. I see uh, Steve Packer has joined us on the Facebook Live feed. Uh, in case you uh, missed it, I hit the wrong button and I ended up, <laughs> I ended up killing the feed. I had to restart the feed again, so I apologize for those that were following. Sorry, I did restart the feed again. So, okay. What in the hell? Are you killing a cat or what? What are you doing over there, man? All right. No, that was Gary. I know it was. All right. Oh, sorry. It's, it's all right. As long as, I, as long as you're still breathing and you're not, you know, somebody didn't cut your throat, I'm good. I'm, you know, we're good. What oh, no, you? I was getting another bottle of water. Oh, how dare you, sir, be drinking on my time. How dare you? <laughs> All right, so we're talking it's about like 85 degrees. So. I hear you, brother. So, all right, so we're talking about secure radio communications. There might be something else available. Now, I haven't seen it. It's called the, I think if I remember right, it's called the Bearcat. And what it does supposedly is that it allows you to use your, fel your cell phone up to uh, certain distances without the use of a cell tower. Now, one thing you have to remember, your cell phone is a glorified walkie-talkie. It's, that's all it is. Bare bones, basic. It's a glorified walkie-talkie or, 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 or a miniature transceiver. You talk on your cell phone. You're, hit, you're, you're sending a signal to a cell tower, a radio signal, and it, it just, you know, it routes it wherever it's supposed to go. So there is an, an it tracks you. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it can, yeah. The thing of it is this. After the grid's been down for a while, a few months, you're going to be starved for information. So that's why you got to keep people. They don't have to necessarily talk on the radio. And you can. what you can do, too, is this. You know, you can turn your radios on and take the microphone, unplug the mic, the microphone from uh, the console. You can still monitor stuff, but you can't talk. And if you have people who you're not sure or are still training to make sure they don't put their elbow on the transmit button. Oh yeah, that's happened in professional life, by the way. So you got to because you got to listen. You got to be out there listening. You know, you keep one radio on the uh, on your secure net on the on the net for your prepper group, and the other radio, somebody's just slowly turning the dial, slowly scanning for a signal, listening. Yep. You know, and so because you, yep, you you got that's what they're doing, and that and that's what you got to do too. I have, found, I have found out too, along with your collection of storage stuff, you want to have the basic battery you use, whether it's triple A's or double A's. Oh yeah. You want to have at least a couple bundles of those on hand because. Yep. Believe it or not, when you think you're not going to need them, that's when they'll pop up and you'll need them. But <sighs> the store's closed. Store. You have to have access to that. Battery. Store. There is no store. It's been looted and gone. Burn to the ground. <laughs> you better have it in your supply about. catch. But, you have, but, if you, if you, but if you store some of that in your pantry, you'd be surprised. It's, it's there when you need it. You, you know, know what? It's like the food is, you know. I found the best selection online. It's called the Brooklyn Battery Works. They've got all kinds of different brands of double A's, uh, uh, the watch batteries for your scopes, all that stuff. And it's, you know what, the best prices I've ever seen. And they're quick on shipping. It's brooklynbatteryworks.com. I go, I went through all the stuff I have that requires a battery. Wrote down every battery size. Went to Brooklyn Battery Works, ordered up a bunch of shit. <laughs> and it's sitting in my well, supply case. And what we did, and what we did, like Home Depot, you can buy these three packs of puck lights for nine ten dollars Right. And they look like a normal lamp. If you put them in the place of a light bulb on a lamp, they look like a light bulb. And they've got three AAA batteries on them. Right. Those things will stay lit up 
for days on end because they don't take no juice. And, you know, when we was building this house before I put my big system in and brought my portable unit over to actually tie into the place, yeah. that's what we used for lighting. Mm-hmm. And it worked wonderful because you could put them beside your bed on a lamp and give it a tap, boom, you got full light, you know. And right. uh, the, it's always, it always, like we put them in the kitchen's room that way if something happens and they can't find a light, they hit that and they got light regardless. So it's in a hallway, whatever. Mm-hmm. Little hands can reach that quicker and they can a switch or whatever. If they can't find a switch, they can hit it. No. And it was a, it was a big success. Okay, there you go. It can be done. Go, uh, the, 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 the Android phone idea, well, I think Android, Android phone uh, has, has many limitations, and a lot of it is surrounding um, the fact that if there's no power, that means the cell phone tower is not working. So, so you, can't, you can't surf on the phone mm-hmm. because the cell phone tower is, is, is not uh, giving you access to the uh, data service. So, and and you can't really text or chat with anyone because again, the cell phone towers are down, and and so the smartphones for the most part, ninety uh, percent of of its technology is basically dealing with go, you know your signal going out to the cell tower, and then the cell tower network will determine the destination that of, of whatever packet or whatever text that you're trying to send. And then it'll send it to that phone somewhere on the other, other side of the planet or the other side of the world. But current cell phones do have uh, two technologies that are point to point and that do not rely on cell towers. And number one is Wi-Fi, and number two is Bluetooth. Uh, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, in their own way, have very limited range. Oh, that's true. Um, but if, but if, if, and you, your your home network doesn't have to be connected to the internet. For your Wi-Fi router to work, and to connect your devices still to the Wi-Fi router, it'll still give out uh, an, an IP address. Mm-hmm. So I think the a smartphone can be used uh, within a limited uh, dura- uh, range um, and 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 radius from the home. Let's say 100 feet, maybe 200 feet, if you have the ability to uh, amplify the signal uh, of you know of of your uh, router. Uh, from 100 feet, or like from 50 feet to 100 feet, or even longer than that, uh, of course, you're going to have to have some renewable power to do so. But I think it's possible that you can still use uh, the cell phone to text chat with other people on devices also connected to your router, because it's essentially a closed network, uh, a LAN, a local area network that's not necessarily connected to the Internet, but the devices on, that are linked to that one router can still um, you know, send signals to other devices that are hooked up to that same router. So uh, I, I think even in a grid-down situation, so long as you have extra battery power to keep your router going, um, people who know, you know, who know what the password is for that router, because you're definitely going to have to secure the router so that not everyone with an electronic device can connect to it. Right. So it's in your inner circle. Mm-hmm. And and once you have that, you'll be able to use a, like a, a like a IRC for example, an IRC application for the Android uh, can still be able to be able to send uh, messages to another phone that's that's connected to your same router. So, you know, I I, I think that there there are some potential for for smartphones to 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 still be useful devices to use for communications in, in, a, in a grid down situation. You know what? I got um, it. I got it. But that, that's... I want you to put together an instruction manual that explains that and how to do it, and we will put it on the CRN page, on the group page and the like page, so we can get that in. See, that's important information that has to be getting out there. How many of us actually know what the hell Chuck's talking about, much less how to do it? Chuck can do that. Will Chuck I, do it? I can I don't tell know. you I would have no clue. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I've heard of what he's talking about, but I've never done it, nor would I even think about doing it. Okay. So you got, you know what, there you go. I want you to put together an instructional video. Can you do that? Yeah, I'll put together an instructional video. An instructional and, and video, how to do it. There, perfect. And, you know, we're going to put that, as, you know, and we'll put the video into the, uh, into the vault, and we'll put it out there for all to see, especially our listeners and our preppers and patrons. I think that's a great idea. If you have an instructional video that you think that we that preppers and patriots need to see 
to understand, to know how to do stuff. I want you to make the video. Put it in MP4 format. Email it to me at contraradioatlive.com or get me a link to it, and I will put it on the CRN page. There. That's that's good stuff there. Okay, I'll do it. Well, it's, it's, it's extremely useful to have because if it's something that you can download later on, put it in your files, then re-reference it. You know, if it's on your computer, you can download it and right. print it off and have it promoted. Put it in a flash drive. Yeah. I mean, you got it. Might well, as well use it. I think you're better off. I think you're better off to print it out and put it in a file because by that point, if something does happen, you're not going to be able to download it off the flash drive. So. All right. And I, I think, and, 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 you know, that's actually a good idea. So I can begin working on that video. Uh, to, I, I believe that it is doable, but I've never done a proof of concept on that before. So I think this video will be my opportunity to actually do an experiment and a proof of concept. Um, another thing that I would add is that in the grid down situation, you don't want a large PC, and, you know, still running. Because it's it's just going to suck the life out of your whatever uh, sources of energy that you have that are bad, you know, like batteries or right. something connected to an inverter. Right. Uh, think about getting a, a couple of laptops because the laptop uh, does have a built-in battery and will continue working um, when the after the electronics. I'm sorry, after the electricity goes out. Right. It's just a matter of being able to keep that the, the battery charged. In which case, you can use the the car battery and the inverter to charge your laptop during times when you're not using it. So. I think uh, laptops will will be essential because because that's what I'm going to use to create this you know like SHTF network of mine um, because a laptop is going to be the uh, IRC server otherwise known as the Internet Relay Chat server and that's what your smartphones are going to be communicating with when you connect to the to the uh, uh, router so yeah I'll definitely work on that and get back to you later on it I think I think it'd be great and that's why I put it out there for. You know, that's why I put it out there. I wanted everybody, for example, Brian K. He, you know, Brian is you know handy. Gary is handy. Make short videos. Make five, ten minute, fifteen minute videos. Send them to me. I'll put them on this. I'll put them on CRN. I will because sometimes you can tell people how to do something, but if you show them how to do it makes it much easier for learning, and they'll probably learn how to do it that much faster. Just something to put out there. Uh, something else I was going to add. Oh, you know what? If you got the ability, go buy an older laptop computer. Keep the battery charged on it, but when you're done charging it, take the battery out. And, yes, I'll put them on YouTube also, Porky Will. Um Take the battery out and store it. If there's an EMP, the last thing you want, you know, especially after you, you know, is to have your uh, computer go down or fry out. So it's just stuff to talk about. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? This is a project I'm well, going to do. Since you brought that one up, I'm yeah, a, since I, you brought that one up, and keep keep, keep with that point that you're going to make in mind. Okay. Um, I still advocate the usage of bird cages or, or, or pet cages as, as makeshift Faraday cages to protect your electronics. There you go. Um, what I wanted to say is this. You suck, man. You may forget. You're lucky you're still my friend. Ah, uh, crap. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> I'm really sorry about okay, that. Okay, no, I got it. You know what? You know what I'm going to do? This will be my little project. And this is what I want to do. In fact, I got to call you anyways, Chuck. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to call you tomorrow. What time's a good time for me to call you? Okay. What time's a good time for me to call mm, you? Anytime. Anytime after five. Okay. Good enough. No problem. Uh, one of the projects I want to do is this. I'm going to make up a CEOI. That's what I'm going to do. And then. Ah. Uh, okay. And then for people. For people who want to. Uh, Join Patreon.com for $2 a month. I'm asking for $2. Some of you give a lot more than that per month. Uh, I'm asking a minimum, $2 a month. Once I will send you the CEOI for your group. That's, that's my gift to you. Of course, I have a bunch of other stuff I can throw in the box too. 
just in case if that doesn't you know do it for you but i'm just throwing it out there all right um there what was it the, yes, that, that is true, Porky. He keeps sending me private messages on the chat room, so I don't always get them right away. Yes, it's a COI. And no, Tim, I'm not going to explain it to you. So, Gary, you have something you want to offer? Yeah. Yes, I was going to tell you also, too, you got to remember these uh, UP, uh, the, uh, UPS is a backup power units that you buy for your computers. Yeah. And the batteries go dead, and people chunk them in the garbage can because they're no good anymore. You can hook them to a regular battery, and you can actually power quite a bit of stuff with them because they're about equivalent to a 250, 300 watt inverter. And it's enough you can tie into it. You can actually power up lights. Guess what, Gary? You get to make you get to make a video too. Make a video of it. Send it to me so we can get it out there. This is important stuff that needs to go out to the preppers and patriot groups. You know, we could talk about hey, yo, it all day you long. You can find them in the garbage can. You Great. can find them in the garbage cans. Okay. Oh, what have we got there? Okay, well, all right. Uh, what else are we looking at? Okay, okay, okay. Anything else? Because I've talked about everything I want to talk about tonight. What do you guys, you guys want to finish up with anything? Well, it's been a very interesting show, so and I'm glad you get these out and get them put out there. Right, I agree. It is an in- all my shows are interesting and good. Just some are better than others. They are. Anyway, some. Are, yeah, some but here are, the past, the past, the past few months, though, they've really gotten better, a lot better. Why? Huh? Why do you think that? Why do I think that? Yeah. Uh, because just the way you put the news out there now where it maybe wasn't quite as strong before, just stuff you're bringing up and doing more discussions on it, you're getting a lot more in the group chats or in the group on the group page. Sometimes. I think you're getting more viewers. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, probably. So, Porky we says, no, not more Gary videos. Yes. You know why we like Gary? Because Gary lives off-grid. So if you want to live off-grid, be like Gary. We're going to put videos. Gary's going to show you how to do stuff, how stuff can be done. Look, the guy lives off-grid. His whole family lives off-grid. You know why they live off-grid? Because he figured out how to do it. He can show the rest of us how to do it, too, unless you're like Brian hey, Kisler. Hey, no joke. I actually, welded, I actually welded most of the day-to-day from my garage, and it's all run by solar. And, you know, I, I've got a Lincoln wire welder. Right. I did a lot of welding thing. It ran off solar. Well, there you go. And that's one thing they tell you. You can, and that's one thing they tell you. You cannot do as well on solar, and I and I did it without a problem. Oh, oh, I've oh, been oh. Doing, I've been, I have been doing it though. So. Yeah, and and come to think of it, um, I, I also came across an alternative product that you can use uh, if you don't have a MIG or TIG welder, and if you don't have any source of uh, electricity, but if you have some propane tanks and or, or a torch that runs on propane, it works just fine. So. Basically, um, the first generation of this product was called Illumaloy, but now there's a couple of competing products out there um, that you could use to to bind multiple metal pieces together or, or uh, metal objects that that have been damaged in some way, shape, or form just by heating up the surface. Uh huh. And then I've touching watched the guys, compound I've to the heated surface. Well, with coat hangers. I've watched guys oh, yeah. with coat hangers and all, you know. Really? That just don't oh yeah. Coat Absolutely, that works too. I didn't know that. Uh, so, and, and, and if there is a situation, I think for anyone who's a welder that currently enjoys being able to weld, even in a grid down, off the grid environment, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's what if for some reason there's a problem with their battery and there's no more power available? Can you continue welding? No. But you can if you have a torch. So, mm-hmm. I, I think for a person. Like Terry, a uh, plan B would be uh, these uh, aluminum alloy-ish rods or something like that that you can continue using for uh, welding metal pieces together. Okay, make a video. Let's post it. Show people. All right. Show people these things so they know it can actually be done. Well, a lot of it is you want to be able to keep going. 
even if the grid doesn't go down, you want to be able to keep going and working to feed your family. So you got to do whatever you got to do to make it work. So. Yes. Okay, what else we got that? Okay. All right. All right, guys. That's all I've got for the uh, for this episode. Now, Friday night is Contra Dawn show, 8 o'clock right here. Same bat channel, same bat time. I still have not thought of a title for the Sunday night show. So I'm still kind of messing around with that. So if you think you got a good title, let me know. Contra Radio at Live.com. Contra Radio at Live.com. You can do that. Uh, Saturday night, again, Julie has to work her real job, and they got a lot of catering events on Saturday, so please give her a break. You know, we're trying to keep, uh, I'm choosing some episodes for when she first started to put up there while she has to do her real job. Because, let's face it, she can't do her real job and, um, you know, do this at the same time. So, with that said, okay. Gary, fire away. What do you got to say? Last word. Well, all I can say is you want to you want to make sure that you have preparations to keep your cold food cold because mm, in yeah. the past few days there's a lot of people throwing out all the meat out of the freezer because they had no power to power. So you want to have some way of backup to keep your food fresh, and don't be afraid to spend a little money doing it. You know that's an excellent point, which is where freeze drying and canning come in to play. That's correct. Don't need a refrigerator for canned items. You can can meat. You can can chicken. You can can beef. You can do all that. You can can you pork. You can can anything. Exactly. And you don't need to have a refrigerator or a freezer. No, just, just you know, a lot of these old older people know how to do all this. They and, do. You know, a lot of people don't want to take over this trade and keep it going. Canning, and it is very yeah. important that... Canning's becoming a lost art in this in this country. It is, Mr. Chuck. What would you like to say? Prep now, live later. Ooh, ooh, that may be a that that might be a t-shirt tagline, my friend. That might be a t-shirt tagline. Nice, very and nice. I came, up, I came up with it all by myself. Yes, you did. You're a special boy, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Hey, I want to thank those in the chat room. Appreciate it for checking in with us tonight, especially Porky Wheel. Dedicated man he is. It's like after 3 a.m. his time. I want to say thanks for Tim Ransom in the pat in the. Uh, oh, what's that? Uh oh. Prep to thrive, not just survive. Ooh, that is a goal, sir, a goal. So I want to say thank you for the guys in the chat room. Thanks again for checking in tonight. For my guests, Gary and Chuck, uh, for uh, coming in and, you know, doing what we do here on, on the roundtable. Hey, it's the roundtable report. I just get a story, get us started, and then we're on autopilot with the rest of you guys. So that's cool. That works. All right. I want to say thank you and good night. Uh, Good night, Gary. Appreciate you coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good week. You too. And then I got Mr. Chuck, who's always a relevant voice here at the Contra Radio Network. Even though he, you know, he doesn't always show up, but when he does, he's got many good things to say, things to add, things we need to hear. And so I want to say thank you and uh, Chuck spending his time with us, especially you know, at his dinner hour, I do appreciate it. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, thank you very, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem, buddy. You know that. I will call you tomorrow because I got. I want to touch base with you on an idea. Okay. With that said, I want to okay. say a uh, good night. Thank you. And for the rest of you, thanks again for joining me here at the Contraria Network, the Roundtable Report. So. Oh, ladies of the watch on Saturday, 8 o'clock, Contra Dawn, Friday, 8 o'clock, and I'll be back on Sunday night, 8 o'clock Central, all Central Daylight Savings Time Zones. All right, 
With that said, I'm John Jeffers saying thank you and good night. Our proper and patriot friends, be safe, be alert, and be vigilant. I'm John Jeffers at the Contrario Network. Thank you and good night. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.